I call the Honourable Member Sue Kedgley. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And the Green Party, uh, too, will be supporting this bill, even though uh, we don't think it goes nearly far enough. And we would like to uh, congratulate also Chester Burrows for his uh, impartial chairing of the Select Committee and the thousands of New Zealanders who took time to make submissions on this bill. But it's interesting that in all the articles and all the commentary uh, that has been written about this bill, I haven't come across one commentator who believes the bill goes far enough. Even Michael Laws said in a column the other day, the bill is simply too watered down to have an impact. And Tapu Misa, she said in her column, the government has diluted the Law Commission's recommendations into an insipid, ineffectual brew to make us feel like something has been done. She said, if I were in the alcohol industry, I would count the updated alcohol reform bill as a win. And that, sadly, is the reality. And all the way through this debate, we've seen this tug of war between the vested interests and the uh, public interests, between the liquor industry, the uh, alcohol, in, the, the hospitality industry, the food industry on the one hand, uh, the um, alcohol action, the public health professionals uh, who have to pick up the pieces of um, alcohol abuse on the other hand. And so far, to this day, uh, the vested interests have been winning hands down, and we assume uh, that that is because the government is simply not prepared to get offside uh, with these vested interests. Now, I spoke to Sir Geoffrey Palmer uh, the other day, and he is clearly extremely disappointed that the key recommendations of his report, such as uh, price, uh, have been rejected. And as he said, I pointed out at the time that the report, the Law Commission's report, is a package. Either, if you want real change, you've either got to accept uh, the whole comprehensive report, the package of reforms, he said, not simply cherry-pick them. But the ironic thing is that in diluting the Law Commission's reports to the point where, where they won't be uh, effective, the government is out of step, completely out of step with public opinion which is actually clamouring for political leadership on this issue. People are simply fed up with the havoc, the destruction that alcohol is causing in our society, the violence, the, uh, the injury, the hospital admissions. People are demanding a tougher regime. The Royal uh, Australian College of, Submission, of Physicians, they said uh, recently that given the incredible harm that alcohol causes in our society, and they pointed out uh, more than 1,000 deaths a year, costing the health system $1.2 billion a year in direct costs of dealing with alcohol. So they said they, given this, they cannot understand why their key recommendations to combat the ultra-cheap price of alcohol and the irresponsible marketing uh, of alcohol hadn't been included in the bill. But there is still time, and we are still hoping, hoping that the government will realise that it has seriously miscalculated public opinion on this issue and that it will support some of the changes that we will be putting up as amendments uh, to strengthen the bill. Mr Speaker, we do need to remind ourselves that alcohol is a drug, a legalised drug, the equivalent, we're told, of a Class B drug. And so it does seem odd that we would allow a legal drug to be sold 24-7, uh, right around the clock, in virtually every dairy and supermarket in the land. And the number of outlets selling alcohol have doubled in the last decade to the point where there's now more than 14,000 outlets selling it. In fact, one submitter said there's far more alcohol outlets in New Zealand uh, than in Australia, despite the fact we've only got about a fifth of the population. It's extraordinary, too, that we've allowed this uh, legalised drug to be heavily marketed and advertised, including to teenagers and young people. Now, we don't allow morphine uh, to be advertised uh, and promoted and targeted at children, uh, so why do we allow uh, this legal drug of alcohol, especially when there is compelling evidence uh, that alcohol advertising encourages people to start drinking at a younger age and to drink to excess? 
Now, there is so much liquor advertising on television that 90% of children are exposed to alcohol advertising and not to mention marketing on television every week. So it's not surprising that uh, when alcohol normal uh, alcohol advertising it normalizes it glamorizes drinking it makes young people think it's cool and sexy to drink so hardly surprising that there's intense uh, peer group pressure on teenagers to drink or that it's got to a point where young people think that they actually have to drink uh, to be cool and enjoy life and that actually not drinking at a party uh, is abnormal and uncool and even nerdy. And so in our view, we will never reduce our binge drinking culture if the saturation, advertising and uh, marketing and sponsorship of alcohol continues uh, unabated. We want to see a tobacco-style prohibition on all alcohol advertising across all media and a phasing out of alcohol sponsorship and advertising of sporting and cultural events. Now, there is also compelling evidence that cheap alcohol encourages people to drink more often and in large amounts. Yet we allow supermarkets to sell alcohol so cheaply at below the cost of production that young people can go to uh, their supermarket, load up every, uh, every weekend with their 20-pack of beer for around $15. Now, submitter after submitter said to us, price is, as, as Jeff, Sir Geoffrey Palmer did, it is the single most important issue in reducing our binge drinking uh, culture. And they point, and, and submitters pointed out that alcohol is sold so cheaply in supermarkets that even liquor outlets and bars can buy their alcohol more cheaply in a supermarket than they can from a wholesaler. How ridiculous is that? Yet this bill, this amended bill, does nothing uh, to stop supermarkets engaging in that predatory practice of selling alcohol below, below the cost of production to entice, to entice young customers into their shop. Now, uh, supermarkets, they told us in the select committee, they said, oh no, we're not selling liquor below the cost of production. But then, when we probed it, uh, in, a secret, uh, in a secret hearing, when we proved it, uh, the supermarkets basically had to admit that they've created a complex system of rebates and discounts which enable them to sell liquor at below the cost of production, even while they claim that they do not. Now, this government readily admits that increasing the price of tobacco has been an effective strategy in reducing the number of smokers. So why wouldn't we use the same effective strategy to try to reduce the number of drinkers? I mean, why would we have one rule for cigarettes, a completely different one for alcohol? It doesn't make sense. Um, we support the proposal to allow uh, local communities to develop local alcohol plans, but we would point out these plans will be able to be appealed by businesses and, as Doug Selman has pointed out, thousands of New Zealanders are going to have to put in this huge grind. They're going to have to turn up to hearing after hearing against a well-heeled alcohol industry and its high-flying lawyers. So, as he pointed out, it could take years to bring any real change in the number of liquor outlets in New Zealand or to reduce the number of hours they operate. Other issues that we think are tremendously important, warning labels on alcohol, particularly about fetal alcohol damage. I mean, we've got uh, warnings on cigarettes and tobacco products. Why not on alcohol? Almost incomprehensible. The legislation doesn't lower the drink driving limit, allows people to uh, drive around intoxicated. We strongly support the government's stated intention of a 5% limit on the content of ready-to-drinks, and we consider the threats of independent liquor that they will challenge our ruling and continue to import uh, liquor uh, over that limit as an outrageous uh, breach uh, to our sovereignty, an outrageous uh, attempt to circumvent our laws. 
Uh, we, uh, the Green Party, is divided over the issue of the age of purchase. We'll be exercising a conscience vote. But in general, we think the drinking age shouldn't, isn't a main issue because alcohol is a problem in all age groups, 92% of heavy drinkers being 20 or over. And it's just too easy to divert the debate into one about the drinking age when it affects every age group. We think we need to address alcohol as a social problem, not a youth problem. The reality is that uh, excessive uh, drinking, particularly in adulthood, is contributing to crime, injury, uh, family violence, sexual assaults. I think it's 80 to 90 per cent of um, prisoners uh, have alcohol or drug-related problems. New Zealanders are fed up. We, they want real action, and uh, I appeal to the government, it's not too late to take some real action. I call the Honourable Member Rahui 